Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to look at this month's Smart Art Box. It would be the February Box 2017. And uh, it came when I was on vacation. So let's have a peek and see what's in here. Um, right off the bat, we've got our pamphlet, which appears to be on uh, Chinese brush painting and calligraphy. So this will be fun. It's out of my wheelhouse. So, um, so wish me luck. Um, we've got some paper here. This appears to be like a rice paper. It has a little bit of a sheen on one side and it's a little bit more matte on the other. We have um, we've got quite a stack of that. We have three different um, Chinese brush brushes that will need to be washed because they've got sizing in the um, in the ends and these are very like soft floppy brushes so um, so they definitely definitely need to be washed before they can be used and we've got um gosh you know what they're they're two of them look to be almost the same size so I don't know maybe that one's bigger than medium than small we have some pens we've got one that's kind of like a looks like a bullet tip or maybe a oh it's got a flex like a kind of a flexible bullet tip it seems to be We've got a uh, uh, more brush tip and we have a, uh, a fine tip and these are um, SIPA. I've never heard of that brand before. Japan material it says. So there's three different pens. We've got a bottle of walnut drawing ink which is kind of like a, like a sepia brown color. It looks like it needs to be shaken up. I see some sediment on there. Shake that up good. And we have a Buddha board and I'm actually kind of familiar with these because our local children's museum uh, has a big one of these in their um, in one of their kind of around the world areas. So these are kind of cool because it's almost like a stone and you paint on it with water and um, and then your your marks disappear after like when it dries so you can um, you can keep you see that kind of it's kind of like matte it's kind of like a stone and um, oh it comes with its own little brush and I think it oh it's freestanding here oh it's all uh, it's all enclosed and the little brush clips in there it comes with a couple stickers and it looks like it comes with an instruction manual that's kind of neat what I think I think what I'm gonna do is um probably put this on it's like it stands like a little easel you wash out the sizing in this brush um and so well if I have it like an easel you can't really see what I'm doing so let me put it out flat um so you can like practice your brush strokes and you don't have to worry about wasting paper because um this is very, my very sad bamboo here <laughs> oh my yes i need practice um so you can practice your brush strokes and then it will just fade away when it dries and then you can do it again so that's kind of nice oh, it looks like you can slide that out if you want to i think this might be like um i don't know if it's a stone or paper or what exactly it is but um but yeah, so you could practice your brush lettering if uh, if you wanted to as well. Oh my gosh, I need work. Um, so that's what that is. And I think that's kind of neat. I've seen the bigger ones, um, the Children's Museum had bigger ones to work on. And um, I think they're pretty durable because they've been, you know, used by tons and tons of kids. But I like the idea that it just kind of fades away. Let me hit it with the heat tool real quick. Hopefully that won't hurt it. Um, so you can see that as it dries, your uh, your lines fade away. So that was kind of cool that that was included in the in the Smart Art box because I don't think those are very cheap um, to buy. So that'll be nice to have, and I think it'll be fun for my kids to use as well. See how it just disappears when you when it dries? I think that's kind of cool. Um, and so we've got these nice instructions I guess. No, it's not really instructions. This is just a like a pamphlet of things you can buy, I guess. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to put my little brush away in there. I like things that are all self-contained. I'm going to set that to the side. And what I plan on doing here, I think, 
because I just got back from vacation, I think that I will try and do a brush painting of a seagull. And actually it was funny because I saw a bunch of seagulls this morning. It was, uh, with it, like, it, if you've been watching the news, you probably saw the huge uh, snowstorms that the Northeast has been having. We just got a couple feet, feet of snow. It was crazy. And uh, it delayed trash pickup. And a lot of my neighbors apparently didn't know that because they, um, they put their trash out and I think I think a bag got torn open or some, something because there were tons of seagulls and crows and stuff circling around and I mean we're not we're kind of inland I mean the river is about a mile away so it's not like we're right on the right on the water's edge so I was surprised at um, I was surprised at the seagulls around here because uh, usually they're nowhere they're not you know you they're down near the river or down near a lake or something or Usually I don't even see them on the pond. They're usually only on the rivers and lakes. All right, so um, generally what you would do is you'd put a couple like weights on your paper to keep them flat. Um, I don't, I could I guess throw an eraser over here. This doesn't want to curl up on me too badly. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. I am going to go on the glossier side because I think it's going to keep my, my lines from feathering. And I'm going to try to, um, and I just rinsed the sizing out of my brush. My brush is damp. I'm going to try to kind of do one shape to give me the seagull body because with, with a Chinese brush painting and I'm not, I'm not practiced at it. I'm not very disciplined. I, I am not very proficient in this. So, you know, there are other artists that are fantastic. Please look up other people. This is not going to give you a proper instruction. It's me fooling around with this medium. Uh, so I've got the body there. I feel like the paper, I think the reason why I don't like working on rice paper that much is that I feel like it's just not robust enough to handle the ink. So I'm really going to try to be, um, to be very economical with my brush strokes. So I want to do, get kind of the spray of wing, of, uh, tail feathers here. And I'm just doing that by stamping my brush down so that I don't end up overworking, hopefully. Okay. Um, I want to get the wings spread open there. So, and I want to kind of use the full length of my bristles there. Cause I don't just want it to be a harsh line. And I guess I could probably like get out a little palette and mix some, mix some water in this. I probably, let me see. Hopefully I got a clean spot on this palette. Maybe I can add a little water to it and mix it down so I have different shades. I'm just going to use this because I know this, I have clean water in there. Mix the walnut ink with a little bit of water so I have some diversity of color because I want to get a line for the top of the wing that would be a little bit more shadowed. And that should dry lighter. It's really difficult to ascertain how, um, uh, how light it's going to be when you're done because you've got this, it's, it's gonna, it soaks into the paper and the paper is gonna reflect what's underneath. It's gonna be a little transparent while you're working on it. So it's kind of tough to tell exactly what you have. So I'm gonna get this other wing up here and just kind of pull that line out. And then with a little bit darker ink, cause I'm just gonna go straight from the bottle. These brushes are very absorbent which is something I'm used to with watercolor, but they're more, there are a, I would say they're probably like a goat hair, a very soft, absorbent uh, material. So it's very wet ink that, and water that's going on this paper. So, and this paper is very thin. So it is a little bit challenging. Um, I kind of feel like I'm not very ergonomically set where I'm working here, but I'm just going to try to get like kind of the bottom. I feel like I should be pulling my brush strokes the other way. Uh, but I, I'm not, this isn't taped down. You don't, I don't think the Chinese artists typically move their paper once they have it down. Now, since this is the walnut ink and I have black ink pens, what I'm intending to do is to let this dry and then, um, and then I'll be able to go in and add some, add some of the ink pen, which would be a little bit darker. I want to indicate the eye 
which would be right about here, I think. The beak's going to be right about there. And the other eye, right about there. Um, and maybe try to get in a little bit more shadows. This is a weird looking bird here, but we're doing our best. I Like I mentioned, I am not a... Uh, I am not a... Uh, I fiddle too much. It, and it, it takes so much... I think it's the same thing with the brush lettering. I am just not disciplined enough. I think what makes the Chinese brush painting so pretty is the fact that um, that the, it's an economy of strokes. They're not overworking it. They're not fiddling with it as much as, as I tend to fiddle with, with my work. And there's also a repetition of like the strokes being kind of similar. Um, like maybe I'll just try to use some similar strokes there to get it similar to the tail there. Um, and I, and, and that takes practice and that takes training and I have not put in the time. So I'm not expecting this to be that great because I'm, you know, I'm just picking this up today. Okay, so let's hit this with a heat gun and see what happens. Okay, I heated it and uh, it's dry, but it's very crunchy. Maybe because I didn't wet the whole paper and I was just kind of painting in one area and where it, like the paper flexed, um, it just got really, uh, really puckery and crunchy, but it's also really thin. I'm just going to go with it and assume this is how it's supposed to be. Uh, I do see why they don't move their work when they're working because since the ink seeps through and gets on the um, your table underneath, you get you'll get like smears and stuff. So, um, well, there's a little lesson that I learned, and uh, now I think I'm gonna go in with my thickest brush pen here, and I'm gonna put in some of the bolder details. I'm gonna get the eye here, a little uh, mark on the side of the face, and get the uh, get the beak. Try not to get too um, detailed. I want to still keep that economy of strokes. Uh, I'm going to get kind of that uh, shadow under the wing. I'm going to move it because I'm just much more comfortable if I can do that. Um, I think I also want to try working on the other side of the paper and see if maybe it's not going to wrinkle so much. So we'll do that in a second. Um, get the leg. And get this one over here. That looks weird, but, but that, that's what it is. <laughs> and maybe just get a little bit of Feathers there, a little more. Uh, I could also do a little bit of in the background, and maybe just do some spattering. I could do some kind of scribbly sketching with the uh, fine tip, but I don't know. I don't know if that's what I should be doing, but I guess I could do whatever I want because it's my artwork. I'm sure somebody with a lot of. Uh, experience would just get them everything perfect in their first their first go and then they wouldn't even fuss with anything else but mine definitely did not have the, uh, the sort of impact that I'd want um, that way maybe throw in just some spatters of ink I mean it's really wrinkled anyway so I'm not gonna worry about oh I do like what the spatters do they seem to add I'm also kind of curious to see if that ink is waterproof. So I'm just gonna... Yeah, that's bleeding. So there might be actually some cool techniques we can do because that ink bleeds. Um, so I'm gonna grab another piece of paper and I am going to try working on the, the uh, softer side of the paper. Okay, so there is our seagull. Very wrinkled seagull. We're gonna set that aside. Um, I'm gonna wipe that really quick. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna try like a rose. Let's do it on the matte side. I'm actually gonna just put a ruler down to hold that side down in place. 
put my little water bottle there. Oh, we're fancy. Okay, so now I think what I'll do is dilute some of that ink on my palette with a little bit of water. And there we go. It's a very thin ink. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little rose, I think. Just like I would if I was doing watercolor. So you can see on this side of the paper, it's very, um, it's wanting to feather quite a bit. And I can do a rose fairly um, easily because I paint a lot of flowers, so I don't have to think too much about it. Not that it's the best rose you've ever seen, but it's a, it's kind of recognizable as a flower. And you can see how the bristles, they have like zero snap. It's very, they're very limp. Um, and now I'm actually going to dry this brush off completely, as much as I can anyways, with a, with a paper towel. Try to squeeze out all that water. And I am going to dip directly into the walnut ink bottle so I can hopefully get a little bit darker of value. And I'm going to put uh, stem and leaves. because I'm just trying to st stick with what's in the kit. So uh, you could definitely use some watercolor if you wanted to, especially if you have like some Ganzai Tambe or um, some of the more Eastern watercolors. I bet the Primas would work really well for this. I also wanna put some big rose uh, leaves. So let me get my uh, Pedal down. I'm going to do that in two strokes a piece there. So I get those nice round ones. The thing that's a little challenging is not knowing how dark your ink's going to come out because, um, because it looks so much darker until it's dry. But I'm just trying to keep that uh, economy of brush strokes and not have more, not have, you know, more, any more strokes than I need. I probably do. I mean, probably when, I probably should have just done one, um, of the, uh, of the sprigs there and just left it. All right. I'm going to pause the video, dry this. We're going to see how it goes. And I'm sure somebody doing proper Chinese brush lettering would let nature take its course and let it dry its own and not fuss with it. But, uh, we all know that I'm not proper. I'm also going to do some splashes while I'm at it. Oh, a little bumblebee. Wouldn't that be? Let's do a little bumblebee too. Let me dry that off so I get a nice dark. Uh, let's see if I can draw a bumblebee by. There we go. <laughs> That's a sad bumblebee. We can accent it with a little ink, with a little ink pen. <laughs> All right, we're going to dry this up. Okay, I dried this and it still wrinkled just as much as the seagull did uh, working on this other side of the paper. Uh, so I definitely would recommend working on the smoother side um, because it does seem to keep your lines a little crisper and neater and, and it just and wrinkles the same amount either way. Um, I think maybe there was less leaking through if you work on the soft side of the paper, but um, yeah, because I don't really see any leaking underneath on the mat, but it could just be because I didn't move this and I dried it uh, with it just sitting there. But, um, but that's something that's kind of interesting. Something else I wanted to try was um, I want to see... Uh, I kind of want to see if I was to go in with a brush tip here and add some detail and then go back over it with the ink what I would get because I think that would get that would give me some really kind of cool effects so I'm just going in and adding very loose sketchy details with the um, marker pen here and I'm just thinking that if I take my brush and add a little of the ink to it, what will I get? Will it feather those out? So I get some natural shadows because remember we added some water to our walnut ink for the rose buds, for the, for the rose petals. So I'm just thinking it might kind of feather it out a little bit like it did with the water. It seems that the just the water on its own is going to make it feather a little bit more than using the ink. But 
I think that layering that might be kind of cool. Let's dry it and see what we get. Actually, this is kind of interesting because it did not feather as much on this side of the paper as it did on the smooth side of the paper when you put water on that wing there and it feathered. It did not uh, feather so much on the more absorbent side of the paper where, um, which I thought it would because just the ink itself feathered a lot more on this pa on this side of the paper versus the other. Um, those ink lines seem to lock into the paper a lot better and stay much crisper. Um, when I went over the flower here with the pen and then went on top of the ink. So, so that's kind of interesting. So one more thing I want to try is to just do a little flower here on the, on the smooth side with my pen. Um, I think I'll just, um, I think I'll just sketch very loosely sketch some, some petals here, go for like maybe a more roughly rose. Or a carnation, I don't know. <laughs> it looks more like a carnation, doesn't it? We can make it a carnation. Valentine's Day. I was on Valentine's Day, um, and uh, in school that you could buy a carnation for your sweetie or your secret admirer. Do you remember that? Like a dollar. You could get green. Oh, and they had always have them for St. Patrick's Day too. You could do green. All right, let's see. So there we have just the pen. Now I'm just going to take this uh, brush, clean it off. So I just have water. And um, I'm just going to go through and kind of uh, move, try to move that ink and see what happens. There's a fantastic artist. Her name is Carol Hamilton, I believe. Pl uh, please correct me if I got that wrong. But she does this work with these this calligraphy pen called an Elegant Writer. And um, she sketches with it and then she does watercolor and it just like the way the ink bleeds, it's so cool. It just looks really neat. So that's what made me think that maybe this ink would be very similar. I think it is. I mean, it's definitely moving around a bit and I think that would be kind of fun to use in a sketchbook. Honestly, I think it would be nicer on watercolor paper because um, watercolor paper, I'm adding a little bit of that diluted ink, um, it just has a sizing in it and it can take it can uh, it can deal very well with the you know wetness of this ink and um, and plus because it has a sizing it'll help the ink stay on the surface and then um, you can manipulate it a lot better so that was that I have to say that this is not my favorite um, media uh, I have, you know, done a little bit in the past and it's never really been anything that I've wanted to write home about, but I did have fun using this kit and I have to be truthful, what I'm probably going to do with this paper and brushes is take them to my next kids art class and let them experiment with these techniques because I think that, um, that it would be fun for them and uh, that way I know I would use the supply up because I don't think I would, I would honestly use it that much in my own practice. But that's kind of the nice thing about these boxes is that you get to try a little bit without spending a ton of money uh, getting into a new craft. And uh, it's definitely great for homeschoolers because you can um, teach about different cultures and different techniques and um, kind of have everything you need because of the pamphlet that comes in it. It comes with a, uh, like a how to paint a dragon. That's what the project in the, in the uh, pamphlet is. So you could try, maybe try the bird, try the flower, try the dragon. Uh, definitely squeeze a few different art lessons out for your kids if you're using this is your homeschool art uh, curriculum. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful box. Even though this was not my favorite uh, my favorite medium, I still enjoyed using it. And I actually like how my seagull came out. So that's why I'm holding this one. <laughs> I like this one the best. Um, and I just think anytime you stretch yourself with different materials, it makes um, your other materials more valuable because then you, it gives you new ideas on how you might want to use them. Thank you so much for checking out this video today. If you would like to get your own surprise box of art supplies delivered to your door every month, check out our sponsor, smartartbox.com. You can subscribe or you can order one of their pass boxes if they're still available. They do go quick though. So, um, so if you are thinking about getting a pass box and you see it's available, I wouldn't wait. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until next time, happy crafting.